Kuwait is a tiny country delicately placed between Iraq and Saudi Arabia. The vast Arab deserts, dry, inhospitable climate provides the country with some of the hottest temperatures in the world and is only cooled off by the calm Persian Gulf that hugs the country's coastline. I only knew of the country by name from the early 90s invasion by Iraq. The country has since returned to one of the highest per capita GDPs in the world thanks to the booming oil industry. The recent surge in modern architecture gives this desert city a few iconic skylines that contrast the cultural minarets that once dominated the horizon. I had a few days to discover what the city had to offer, and here's how it went. Alright guys, I just got off the plane from Saudi Arabia to Kuwait City and checked into my room which is like right in the heart of downtown and I have this beautiful picture window with these really nice buildings. So the sun is setting just now as I checked in. So tonight I'm just gonna kinda like walk around the city at night, check out some of the coffee shops, some of the markets and everything. And I'll see you guys tomorrow to explore the city but I am so excited like this skyline just gets me very very excited i love modern architecture a lot i don't know about kuwait city so i'm excited to just explore this place and check it out so i'll see you guys in the morning good morning guys it's my first morning here in kuwait city and i think the first thing i want to do is go check out the kuwait towers it's very iconic there's three towers with globes on it and they look like from another planet and it's all the way like on the coast so it's about two miles from here um, so I'm gonna walk kind of through this downtown area also there's a lot of like cool really hip coffee shops right where I'm staying so first I'm gonna grab a coffee for the walk Alright guys, so I've just kind of walked through downtown and I still have a little ways to go. So these towers are a little bit more removed from the skyline than I pictured. Anyways, I still have probably like half a mile or so until I actually get to the towers. Alright guys, so I've just cut across over to the water and it's this beautiful beach here that like lines the whole coast there's these palm trees there's a little walkway I am pretty close to the towers now so not too much further hopefully so I've finally made it to the Kuwait towers here and there's three of them and two of them have these big domes on them there's a restaurant in one of them and as you can see close up, there's just these beautiful texture to them and beautiful colors. They are a little bit, as I noticed earlier, further removed from the skyline than I thought because I thought I'd be like getting a picture of these towers and the skyline. But you can actually, looking off down the coast though, you can see like another part of the city. You can see the skyline there. It's kind of hazy through the sun and sea there, but very cool towers. I was very excited to come to Kuwait and see these so let's uh, keep walking around and getting some different angles of them. There's a restaurant and a viewing platform up in one of these towers but it costs about $10 and they won't let you bring like professional cameras. They only allow you to bring your phone. So I think I'll pass on doing that. But I did see there was a pier over here on the water. That'll probably give me a good view looking back at the towers over the water. So let's head to the pier and uh, check that out. Out here, 
here on this pier, you have a nice view looking back at the towers, but then you're also getting this nice view of the skyline of Kuwait over the water. So you're getting two really kind of cool views and there's a lot of fishermen and just a cool view from out here on the pier. So all along the water here is just this beautiful little walkway. There's like some little playgrounds, there's green areas, there's benches, the beach, and you just have great views looking back at the tower. The skyline is just there. You can see all the way down the coast, way down. The city is way bigger than I thought. So I'm just going to go for a little walk along the corniche here and just enjoy the calm, peaceful morning. So there's some really nice restaurants and stuff right along the water here. So I just got some nice traditional foods, some hummus, some shawarma right here on the water. It's really delicious and beautiful views. And now I'm gonna head into a little bit more like the downtown. I wanna see some of those skyscrapers up close and yeah, just see what the more modern downtown Kuwait is looking like. It's kind of surprising to me that this like downtown isn't like right on the water because there's just nothing right here. Absolutely no development between the water and the downtown. So it seems like they could have just built everything right on the water and maximized that corniche, but it's actually like half a mile off. So I've pretty much made it to the base of those tall towers. There's El Amra Tower and there's this other tower uh, right here that has lines going up. And it's actually a lot quieter than I expected. I mean, there's a lot of traffic and everything, but not so many shops. It's probably more of like a business district. Not a ton to do here, but beautiful buildings. And it looks like they're still doing a lot of construction here. So. It looks like it's gonna kind of be a high-end luxury living area business district. So I'm just gonna keep walking through some of these tall buildings and then there's this big park that kind of goes around the center of downtown that I'm gonna check out. guys, I've just made it to El Shahid Park, which is this big crescent moon shaped park that wraps halfway around the city. And you have these like beautiful skyline views and just nice luscious green grass and vegetation, plants. There's a couple museums, a cafe, and it just seems like this really relaxing place to kind of just hang out, go for a walk, stay a little bit cool. It's a little bit quieter than the rest of the city. And yeah, you just have these amazing views looking back at the city. So I'm just gonna walk around the park, see what I find, enjoy nature for a little bit in the midst of the city and enjoy green vegetation because <laughs> I've been in the desert for a while now. So yeah, let's just walk around. This is such a beautiful park. There's so much amazing landscaping, beautiful vegetation, tons of places to sit and hang out. There's a few cafes and restaurants and everything. It's just a really nice park right in the middle of the city here. I'm enjoying just walking around. Such a cool park. I really enjoyed just walking around. It was probably 
almost more than a mile just walking the whole park. I stopped and got a coffee at one of the coffee shops. So really cool. But I'm gonna head out of the park now and head back to the older part of the city. There's a market I wanna check out and some more architecture. So yeah, let's head out of the park, back towards the city. One thing I've noticed about these Gulf countries is that their cities are super spread out. They'll be like really dense areas of tall skyscrapers, but then they'll just be like tons of flat nothingness like in between. Like I'm just walking through this like dirt field right now. So it's really strange and spread out. And the other thing is same with Saudi Arabia. There's like no pedestrians. Everyone just drives everywhere. So that's probably why things are so spread out is these cities aren't meant to be walked like I do. Anyways, I'm gonna walk towards this row of buildings right here. There's this really cool, I think it's called the Liberation Tower. Uh, it looks like a telecommunications tower, but it's also a water tower. And it just has a really cool look to it. It's very tall. So yeah, let's head that way. Guys, I've just made it to the base of Liberation Tower, and this building is massive. It's 372 meters high, so it dominates the skyline. Especially here in the older part of Kuwait City, it just towers over everything else. So this takes me back to the old town of Kuwait City, which is near some of the markets I wanted to show you guys. So let's head to the markets. I'm just outside Murabakia Souk, which is like an old market, and it's been redone, so it has like a very modern feel to it, but it, it's where the old market was, and it's kind of like these winding little alleys. There's gonna be lots of shops, lots of clothing, lots of perfume, but you can also get like fruits, vegetables, meats, there's restaurants, there's like a couple open squares. So let's just head in there, and I'll show you the old markets here in Kuwait City. Let's go. That was the market. It's a pretty extensive market. There's so many different regions to it. There's like a gold area, there's a money exchange area, there's like fabric area, there's again vegetables, a seafood market. So there's a lot to kind of just like walk around and explore. And especially at night, it gets very lively. It was a little bit quiet now because it's still the middle of the day. But I do like how that most of the market kind of is covered even during the middle of the day so it can block out the sun and keep it shaded keep it cool in there so anyways guys that's about it for this afternoon I'm probably gonna head back to the hotel put some of my stuff away and then watch some of the soccer matches this afternoon there's a different part of Kuwait City that I want to explore tomorrow uh, just going in the other direction so I'll see you guys tomorrow Good morning guys, it's my second day here in Kuwait City and I'm gonna start by heading to the Grand Mosque of Kuwait. It's actually just a couple blocks from my hotel so it won't be far and I wanna check that out and then I wanna head in like a slightly different direction than I did yesterday and see a different part of Kuwait City. So let's start by heading to the mosque. All right, so I guess there are like designated tour times, and fortunately I came like two minutes after a tour started, so someone's gonna pick me up 
and give me a tour of the Grand Mosque, which will be really interesting because I know there's a lot of history that I'll learn along the way. So I'll be starting the tour soon. So the first room on the tour was seeing all this old calligraphy art and Arabic is just such a beautiful language and the way that they present it there. So that was beautiful. So now we're going to head into the Grand Mosque here. So let's check it out. So pretty, beautiful carpet, so much intricate like tiling and texture on all of the walls and these amazing chandeliers. She said that they're like one ton each and there's so many different parts of this mosque that have been imported from different areas like the doors are from India, the tiles are from Morocco, the chandeliers are from Italy. The mosque was built in the 1970s and it took about six or seven years to complete and cost about 46 million dollars to make and it is just gorgeous. So. so we just finished up our tour of the Grand Mosque here and it's just beautiful. The inside was just gorgeous. It was just so ornate. All right, now I'm going to head west in Kuwait City to Sheikh Jaber El Ahmad Cultural Center, which has some like really cool architecture. There's some nice museums and everything. It's about a mile and a half walk, but it should be right along the water, so it should be nice. It's calling me walked all the way to the cultural center and it had this like beautiful metal geometric architecture it was really pretty but we soon found out that it wasn't really the museum and science center that like I thought it was it's more of just like an opera house so there's a lot of theater and everything but still a beautiful like building we were able to walk around a little bit but then we were soon kicked out because you can only go if you have tickets to some of the events there. Anyways, I'm going to start walking back to town now, the older part of Kuwait, but I'm going to walk through a different way and check out some more of the modern skyscrapers here in Kuwait City. One interesting thing I learned while taking like the Grand Mosque tour earlier this morning 
is that once a mosque is built, it can never be destroyed. So as you're walking around, you'll just see all these older looking mosques just right amidst some more modern architecture. And there's actually over 800 mosques in Kuwait City. Guys, once again, I'm just walking around like downtown Kuwait City and there's just this massive sandy lot with nothing. And it's like right amidst all of this really amazing development. It's just interesting to me. And even our guide was telling us earlier that real estate prices are so high here in Kuwait City, yet there's so much of this undeveloped land. But for me, it's also like a cool opportunity since there's no buildings around. You just get 360 degree views of all the surrounding skyscrapers of the city because it just kind of opens up the space a little bit here to get some nice views. So right near the north of the old town of Kuwait City, right on the coast here along the Corniche, there's this big harbor with a bunch of boats and you can see the skyline of Kuwait City off in the background. And then there's this fish market uh, called Souk Shark here where you can go and buy some like raw fish. And then there's this nice shopping center here along the harbor. So yeah, let's go check out the fish market. expected there were so many people in there and they were just there was fish like all over the ground they were just dumping massive buckets in there people were chopping fish it was so big there were like hundreds of fish stalls and just packed with people and like so much of Kuwait has been so calm and chill and like more civilized in a degree and this just felt a little bit more like a third world fish market um, I mean the facilities were definitely clean but a strong fishy smell and just a little bit more chaotic and crazy than most of the rest of Kuwait. But I've come out here to the other side and you can see these more traditional wooden fishing boats out here with the skyline. And yeah, it's just really pretty, but that was really cool. I'm glad I found that fish market. That was, that was awesome. So right next to that kind of chaotic, smelly fish market is this really nice kind of upscale mall and then like beautiful harbor here with like a bunch of nice yachts and just has like a totally different feel than the fish market that's like right next door. But kind of cool just to have that contrast of this super nice shopping center and more traditional like boats and fishing market just right nearby. I love experiencing that kind of stuff when I travel. All right guys, so that was pretty much two days here in Kuwait City. Uh, I tried to see most of the major sites here just in the two days. Like I loved seeing the towers, the nice promenade, some of the old mosques, the culture center, the liberation tower, lots of just really cool architecture, amazing location right on the Gulf here. And then so many like really hip coffee shops and nice restaurants. So I really enjoy just walking around the city and I'm sure there's a lot more you can see and do. But anyways, that's about it for today. I'm going to head back to the market and watch some World Cup matches. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.